Hi and welcome to Lunchtime Prayer Power. I'm Deidre Banks. Today we're praying against the infiltration of spies and hindering spirits in the government trying to stop the plans of God. We know that God has plans for our nation. He has plans for America. These plans are good and not of evil for a future and a hope. And we want to press into these plans. We want to ask God what the plans are. As you're sitting before the Lord, you're an intercessor for your specific area, your metron, you're asking God to show you things about your specific area so you can pray effectively. We don't want to just pray against the plans of the enemy. We also want to pray for God's plans to be established. Uh, several weeks ago, I had a vision when I was praying that there were spy ships off the coast of America. There were also, I saw in a, a separate vision as I was praying, people infiltrating the government at the lowest levels and working their way up. So you want to pray against this on today. want to pray that the right people will be in charge and righteous leadership will go forth. We're going to read Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. That reminds us to be fully armored in the whole armor of God and then we will be sick successful against the plans and the wiles of the wicked one. Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And someone ought to say the whole armor. We don't want to put on part of the armor, just putting on the helmet of salvation, but leaving our sword of the spirit at the cleaners or leaving it somewhere else. We want to be fully armored with the shield of faith, our shoes of peace, our belt of truth. Amen. Our sword of the spirit, our breastplate of righteousness, our helmet of salvation. We want to be fully armored. Amen. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, verse 12, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So there's different levels of things that are attacking us. Amen. Therefore, take up the whole arm of God, it says it again, to remind us not to put on just part of it, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, we want to stand. Therefore, we're going to go through the armor here. Verse 14. Having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. I love that. Not part of the darts. If you have your shield of faith, you're quenching all of the fiery darts of the wicked one. And we know that he tries to attack our faith. Verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation right? I have the mind of Christ through the Holy Spirit. He's, he's in there. He's guiding me. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. The word of God is our sword of the spirit. We want to wield that. We want to display our, so we want to speak the word of God. Amen. Verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. We're going to begin now praying to bind the here and during spirits in the government and stop the plans of the enemy, but push forth the plans of God. Thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, Father God, that you are mighty and victorious in battle. You're bigger than all the plans of the wicked one. You speak a word and the enemy has to bow. We thank you, Lord, for the power that you display in the universe, that you built this earth. You are creator, God, Elohim, and you are not afraid of the wicked one. You're not surprised by what he's doing. We pray right now, Father God, one, that you would forgive us, Lord, as we go into to prayer. We ask you to forgive us for allowing any of these plans to go forth where we turned a blind eye to the works of darkness, where we may have even been part of the plans to destroy things in the government that we thought were not of you, Lord, but then we were not operating in the right spirit. Forgive us, Father God. Forgive us, Lord, for the destruction in our nation. Forgive us, Father God, for where we have dishonored the government, where we have dishonored those in authority. And Romans 13, 1 tells us to honor to respect those in authority. So forgive us, Father God, for dishonoring the government, for speaking ill of them, for uh, trying to chastise them, for trying to backbite and malign them, Father God. Forgive us, Lord. We pray right now for righteous leadership in the government, that there will be the people that you have called forth in righteousness to reign in the kingdom of the earth, that they will be people in charge, Lord, that have your heart, that are men and women after your own heart, that are not people that are laced in darkness, but that have been translated into the kingdom of light. We pray, Lord, that there 
would be people that are in their prayer closets coming forth in government. People that have been on their knees before they come to work. That they're praying over the government. They're praying over the offices. We bless the cabinets and the positions. We pray for your plans to go forth mightily and the plans of the wicked one will be thwarted. We pray that you send confusion to the enemy's camp. That he would be bound. The works of darkness would be destroyed in Jesus' name. That they would be in the hell fire that the enemy meant for us would be drowning his plans. That you would sent the floodgates against him as he tries to come in like a flood that the flood would go against him that our worship would be as a flood against the enemy that he would be drowned in our worship of you because you are the one and true mighty God you are a glorious God worthy to behold you are high and lifted up through your son Jesus Christ who died upon the cross for our sins and we thank you Lord that you are seated on the throne and your right hand are pleasures forevermore and that Jesus Christ sits at the right hand ever making intercession for us we thank you Lord that we can go boldly before the throne of grace because of your gift of grace and mercy. You're a merciful God. Your mercies are new every morning. They're everlasting. And so we come to a merciful and a just God asking him to forgive us of the plans of the enemy that we ourselves have put together, that we have listened to a voice other than yours, where we have gone forth in things that were not glorifying to you, where we thought we were doing the right thing, but they were plans of wickedness. Forgive us, Lord, for teaching the children debaucherous things in the schools. Forgive us, Lord, for teaching them about doctrines of demons and for the deception that we have allowed to go forth in our nation that is teaching the children about their identity in this world and not their identity in you because their true identity is as children of the most high God as they accept you Lord we thank you Father God we were made in your image and likeness help us to turn back to you Lord help us to be a people of righteousness that are after you in heart as David was help us Lord raise up the Esthers now who are strong and courageous who are willing to to fast and pray for their nation. Raise up, Father God, the Elishas with double mantles who are not afraid, who are going forth mightily. We thank you, Lord, for the prophets that are rising up right now in the nation to stand on the seven mountains of influence, the media, the arts and entertainment, the religion, the family, the education, the business, and the government. We thank you, Lord, for the prophets arising now and prophets arise, prophets arise. May the prophets arise in this hour. May the prophets spring forth and rise up mightily and may they push back the works of darkness. May they be praying prophets because the word said that they be prophets, let them pray. Help us, Lord, to be people of prayer. Give us a passion for prayer, a hunger and thirst for righteousness so we may be filled with your word, with living waters that will not be quenched. Help us, Lord. Help us not to quench your spirit, Lord. Help us to allow it to flow freely. Help it to overflow in our nation. Help us to be a bright light shining, a city on a hill that is constructed for you, resurrected out of the blood of Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, to stand there for fully armored. We pray, Lord, that we will lift our shield of faith high, that we will not shrink back, that we will put on our helmet of salvation, that we will have the breastplate of righteousness, that we will walk in peace, Lord. Let peace be our umpire. Help us to wield our sword of the spirit accurately and help us to rightly divide the word of truth, speaking your word, Lord, in and out of season. Help us, Father God, to be full of your spirit, that your spirit may overflow in our nation, that our belt of truth is fully fastened, that we are speaking the word of truth, that truth resides in us because the spirit of truth is inside your people, Lord. Help us, Father God, to receive your gift of the Holy Spirit for those that have been saved but not baptized, Father God, that you give with us this gift freely, Father God. We know that you do, so help us to ask, Lord, because it's not you holding up the gift, but we must ask to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord that more of us would be full of the spirit, Father God, and even more we can be infilled, even more on today. There's a greater infilling on today and every day. So Father God, we ask you to fill us up and overflow. Help us to be strong in the Lord and the power of your night, the power of your might, not by our might or power, but by your spirit. Help us, Lord, to rebuild your kingdom, to rebuild where the enemy has come in and he's tried to run rush out over us. Help us to rebuild the foundations of the church where Jesus is the cornerstone. Help us, Lord. You were rejected. Jesus Christ was rejected, but became the chief cornerstone. So, Father God, we ask you in this hour to help us to rise up unified, remove any division from us, God. Help us not to walk in disunity because you are a unifier. You are unified. There's no disunity in Jesus Christ. So, help us, Lord, help the church to look like Jesus. Help the church, help the bride to to, to be like what you called us to be removed, the spots, the blemishes, Lord. Help us. 
Cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Breathe fresh life into your bride. Fresh Holy Spirit. We pull down your plans right now and we advance them. We advance your plans in the earth. Your plans to unify. Your plans to save souls. Your plans to awaken us, Father God. Help us, Lord, in this hour. To be a bride on fire for you. A hungry bride that's not satisfied with just a few minutes of the word. A bride that's not satisfied with just watching TV. A bride that's hungry for the bridegroom. That's hungry for the husbandman. Help us, Lord, to be hungry. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, on today to be hungry for you. Fill us up, O Lord. Fill us up with your living water. Fill us up with your bread from heaven. Fill us up, Lord. Fill us up to overflowing so we may overflow in the nations. Bless the country of America. Remove any wickedness from us, Father God. Search our hearts, O good God, and remove any wickedness from us. We incline our ears to your instructions. We incline our ear to your word. Help us, Lord, to rightly divide your word of truth. In Jesus' name, amen. God's plans will be established in the earth. He's a good God. And as we're praying, we're tearing down the plans of wickedness and we're advancing the plans of God and his plans are good. So I encourage you to stay unified. Continue to join with us as we pray Monday through Friday for the seven mountains of influence, the media, arts and entertainment, religion, family, education, business, and also government. God is doing a mighty work and a move. I'm excited for what God is doing in this hour. There are trials and tribulations coming. I'm not going to lie to you, but with God, we can do all things. So we will not tower. We will not be ashamed. We will not be afraid. We're going to rise up victoriously because thanks be to God who always leads us to triumph in Christ Jesus. We are victorious warriors and we will not back down to the enemy, but we rise up in victory, united believers in Jesus Christ. Be blessed. Last.